2005. Uh, I mean, I'm sorry, 2001. 2001, I got a call from the Cleveland Browns. Understand this, Justin. I never had any desire to work in the NFL. <laughs> it wasn't my life's pursuit. It wasn't my goal. I wasn't going to commit suicide if I didn't get there. It wasn't all I lived for or dreamed about. I had no aspirations to get here. Uh, it happened. I took the, the, the chance, uh, stayed there for three years, was unemployed for a year. Uh, got a call from University of Buffalo, went to the University of Buffalo for literally six months under Turner Deal, who I think the world of. <clears throat> um, met my second wife there. Uh, I always tell people I took the best thing that you know, the city of Buffalo had to offer and got it the hell out. So I, I, <laughs> I moved back to Pittsburgh again. Um, I'm there and I, and I get a chance to go to the Washington Redskins with Mike Shanahan. I turned that down because my youngest daughter was now in Pitt's nursing school, which means tuition waiver. Mm. We get a new athletic director. I walk into Coach Wanstead's office. I said, Coach, I got to tell you, we're all in trouble with this athletic director because I worked for the guy before. He's an egotistical maniac. Everything revolves around him. Uh, um, Dave, Dave Wanstead told me, he goes, don't worry about it. I got the chancellor in my pocket. One year later, we're all fired. Now, thankfully, I had signed a three-year extension. So for two years, Justin, I literally sat around unemployed, couldn't find a job. Nobody hired me for oh, two, wow. two years, for really three years. Um, the second of the two years, I'm, I'm sorry, two years, uh, my wife decides her and her son want to open up a performance center of all places, Buffalo, New York, where she's from. I'm telling her, ain't going to work, ain't going to work. Oh, it'll work. I'm like, ain't going to work, it'll work. And this goes on. So, all right, I give in. So we go there for one year. Uh, and I get a call from BA, and that's how I wind up here. So I've been at the University of Pittsburgh three different times from 97 to 2001. Went to the University of Buffalo, got called to come back to Pitt again with Coach Wanstead, stayed there till James, which is where I, I brought in James Smith, who I think the world of. He's one of the most intelligent people I've ever been around in my entire life. What really amazed me about James one day is he walks in the office with an uh, acoustic guitar and starts strumming out Stairway to Heaven. I'm like, where the fuck did you learn to do that? And then I find out his degree in college was classical music. I'm like, now I know why you're so smart. You're a musician. And musicians are incredibly talented and incredibly smart people. I don't care what anybody says. And I um, worked with James, and that's why I met Mike Dango. Uh, Alan De Janeiro. There are some of the conversations we would have in my office were just incredible. With myself, Alan, Anthony Paroli, who's now the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, Micah Dangle, and James Smith. It was just two hours of some of the most thought-provoking conversations you'd ever want to be involved with. I tell people today, the true definition of intelligence is not what you know, it's what you do when you don't know. Mm. My desk looks like it does. And I'll be the first to tell you, Justin, I don't know everything. I'm, le I'm learning every day. I just went to Matt Jordan's force plate course. Uh, and he came to Phoenix, and I'm, call I'm constantly bothering. Thank God for Matt Jordan, because I'm constantly bothering him, to be honest with you. Uh, but then I, I went back to Pitt, and then, then back to Buffalo, then back to Pittsburgh again, and back to Buffalo for six weeks. I'm driving home, and... I'm not a fanatic. I'm not a cold weather fan. Don't like it. <laughs> Pittsburgh do must not have been for you or Buffalo. <laughs> oh my God. I'm proud to be a Pittsburgher, but I tell my, my wife, I don't want to go back there either. So <clears throat> I'm sitting outside the University of Buffalo's weight room, you know, and it's, I'm, I'm freezing my balls off. It's so cold. And the night before, I got a thing on my phone that said, BA called quick break from the show to remind you to hit that like and subscribe button. It helps us out and it helps you be notified when we have new content get released. So again, please hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoy this content. And with that, let's get back to the show. So I text BA, I said, did you butt down me? He goes, no, I need to talk to you in the morning. I tell my wife, I said, don't get excited. Just do not get excited. He's probably calling me on Caleb, um, Caleb Mack, Khalil Mack, who plays for the University of Buffalo. I don't know anything about him. He's going to tell B.A., don't know anything about him, can't help you. So sure enough, next day he calls me, he goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm freezing my fucking balls off, what are you doing? And he goes, I need you on a plane Wednesday, tomorrow. I'm like, are you serious? He goes, yes, because he had told me when he first got the job, if he was in, I'm in. 
But then he got here and called me the next day and said, this is the hardest phone call I've ever had to make. I'm sorry, I can't bring you in. So he told me to sit here, I told my wife that. Um, so he opened up the performance center in Buffalo and I hate to backtrack, but then I get the phone call and that's how I wound up here. To exactly how I went. I've known BA since my days with the Cleveland Browns. He went to the Steelers, I went back to Pitt, I would talk to him and see him every day. Um, and that's how, that's how I'm here. How I've been here for 10 years and through four different staffs now, I can't tell you. Yet, by the grace of God and lucky. Uh, but like I said, it was never my aspiration, it's never my goal to be in the NFL. All I was ever wanted to do, to be honest with you, Justin, was be the head strength coach for the University of Pittsburgh. And that happened, I was blessed that it happened three times. Actually, four years ago, they called me and asked me to come back for the fourth time. And as much as I love Pittsburgh, as much as I love Pitt, I just, uh, once you've been in the sun, and you see the sun every day, and listen, they can say what they want about the heat. I don't give a shit. I don't have to shovel heat. I can put up with the heat. That's the, of the year. We keep it so cold in our building that sometimes I'll be outside sitting on the wall in the sun because it gets too cold in here. So I'm a creature of warmth and habit, and I hope to one day retire here. I have another year left on my contract. We'll see what happens after this year because you're not guaranteed anything in this league. <clears throat> they say the NFL stands for not for long, right? Honestly, NFL stands for no fucking logic. Ooh. That's the way I see it because the way things are set up, and we might as well get into this right now. Here's four words we need to eliminate from the English language as, as the language or conversations as strength or physical preparation coaches are concerned. Get rid of injury prevention because you ain't preventing injury. Thank you. You don't want to get injured. Keep going. Don't be a fucking athlete or don't ever get <laughs> off the bench. Because the more you get exposed to the competitive environment, the higher the likelihood of injury occurring. J.J. Watt, last year I did his shoulder rehab. Four weeks after surgery, he comes to me and says, you're doing my rehab, Brett Fisher's doing my tissue work, Chad's doing my running. I'm like, what? He goes, yeah, you're doing everything now. I'm like, no, no, no. He goes, no, you're fucking doing everything. <laughs> Here's a guy who spent 12 years, and I have the utmost respect for him. Guys like him, Carson Palmer, Zach Ertz, Buddha Baker's my hero. Mm, love Buddha. He's awesome. Uh, he just everything you want in a player and as a person. Same thing with JJ. So JJ's played in the league for 12 years, had 19 surgeries. I've never seen anybody prepare harder in my life. And this is 43 years, Justin, and JJ Watt. How do you explain 12 surgeries? So get rid of the words injury prevention because you're not going to prevent shit, especially the way the NFL is set up and what people, oh, the normal yeah. fan doesn't understand, Justin. No, no. The minute the season ends, you can't touch them yep. till um, voluntary off season. And you then they're gone for a big gap, yeah. They're, mm. they're, and here's the problem with that. Taking a quick break from the show to talk to you guys about our sponsor, Team Builder. If you have any online training platform needs, Team Builder is the go-to place. Team Builder has the ability to integrate with velocity-based training tools. They have the ability to program and have notes and videos for all of your athletes and your clients. This is your number one stop shop. Been using it since 2019 when I was working at Towson. So I've used it, love it. Make sure you check it out. Go ahead, click the link down in the description. And with that, let's get back to the show. First of all, abruptly ending anything causes great stress and harm to the human body. It's like slamming into a wall in your car going 100 miles an hour and slamming into a brick wall. Because that's what you do. The body expects to play, then all of a sudden you abruptly stop it. And you do nothing. Mm. There has to be, and I, I've done it here for a couple years, and I, I told Tommy Maslinski I was doing it, he goes, great idea, they'll never do it. And he's right. A transition period into active rest. If you're an elite athlete, you should never stop training. It's your job. Your body is your corporation. Stop treating your profession as a part-time job. You don't need time off. What I'm saying is now, take a week off, I get it. But now just pick the lowest hanging fruit. Charlie Francis's bike tempo fits in perfect to a transition period of just active recovery and low intensive work. Low intensive work. Before, I didn't say go back in the weight room and start hanging and bagging four days a week. I didn't say that. I said pick the lowest hanging fruit, do some mobility work, do some band work, simple body weight exercise. You know, tell me you can't do a fucking push up. I mean, fuck, you could go swim. That'd be great. Yeah, swimming, exactly. Do something. But this, this 
sitting on my ass doing nothing <laughs> is the worst thing you can do. Because two things happen. Number one, you dive deeper down the rabbit hole recovery. Mm. We want to recover? Sure we do. But you'll recover faster, more efficiently, and better by being active. Motion is the lotion. You'll heal faster by movement instead of laying on your ass and getting rubbed and tugged on on a, on a, on a table by some therapist. Second of all, time away from the, di the gym leads to a lower adaptive response of attended loading capacity. So now you go back to training like you did. I'm going to go back to four days a week. I'm going to get specific. You're not to, you skip over general qualities, but general qualities support, support specific qualities. And you got to remember this. Your fitness level is directly proportional to or related to the amount of time it took you to acquire it. Charlie mm. Francis told me a long time ago, Justin, the mm. rush to put things in place leads uncertainty down the road. Mm. I added dot, dot, dot. Usually that's disastrous. Congratulations on making it to the end of the video. Why don't you celebrate by watching more videos just like it? You can also help us on our quest to placate the algorithm gods by liking, sharing, subscribing, and commenting. Thank you.